Good morning. So what does Jeremiah tell the people about their perception of, of things that they talked about yesterday morning? That when they stopped baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven, suddenly things went hard for them. Our readings at Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 20 to 23. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the people, the men, the women, and all the people who had given him that answer, saying, The incense that you burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and did it not come into his mind? So the Lord could no longer bear it because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you committed. Therefore your land is a desolation, an astonishment, a curse, and without an inhabitant, as it is this day. Because you have burned incense, and because you have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, or walked in his law, in his statutes, or in his testimonies, therefore this calamity has happened to you as at this day. So actions have consequences. Their apostasy has led to where they're at today in their situation. And we'd already said this, but he's restating it again for absolute clarity. Jeremiah doesn't want to leave the slightest doubt in their minds about where the guilt lays. Why? Because until we really have a clarity that we really are at fault, it's harder for us to repent. And what is desired, what God wants, what Jeremiah wants, he wants these people to repent. So God can do something for them. Their punishment is not arbitrary, but it is a direct result. It is a direct consequence of their apostasy. Life is, shall we say, interactive. So God gives us free will. We get to choose. We get to think and do. God shows us the difference between good and evil, and he allows us to choose the evil, but he urges us to choose the good. I mean, hey, God even withholds the full results of evil. Otherwise, we'd be destroyed right away. So even, even then, he's merciful. He stops us from getting the full results. But he wants us to step away from it because it's very harmful to us spiritually. So God warns us, but he doesn't force us. He seeks us, but he persuades rather than forcing. Love is not perfected by fear, and he wants our love to be perfected. So he's very careful not to provoke us to fear and distrust. Satan is constantly at work as much as he's able to cause us to fear and distrust God. So God is working in the opposite direction. But our actions come back and haunt us many times. May God help us make those good decisions. In fact, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, it is our sins that separate us from you. Thank you that your servants, your faithful servants like Jeremiah, help us to understand that we are wrong and help us to reach that place where we can actually repent. So Lord, help us today to hear your servants, your messages to us from wherever they come that would help us to repent. We are very blind without you, Lord, so you please be our guide and helper. Help us to see. The people in Jeremiah's time had a lot of trouble seeing. Help us not to fall into the same trap, Lord. Help us to see well. We ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we rightly understand our guilt, we can own it and repent. That's what God's looking for. God be with you today.